from Wade Slavery and come join the grand industrial band. How oh, would you from misery and hunger be free? Come on, do your share, land and there is power. And live in a shack that's away in the back Or would you have wings up in heaven to fly And start here with a rag on your back But there is power, there is power In a man to work and folk When we stand hand in hand That's the power, that's the power That must rule in every land One in dust will you To feed in your head uh, Don't organize All union despise If you want nothing Before you are dead Shake hands with your boss And look wise But there is power There is power In a band of work and folk When we stand Hand in hand That's the power That's the power That must rule in every land One in dust will you from every land and come join the grand industrial band but then we are share of this earth shall demand come on do your share lend a hand there is power there is power in a man to work in folk when we stand hand in hand that's the power that's the power that must rule in every land one in dust Hi, welcome to Labor Union TV. I'm Bill Floyd, and this is my co-host, Barbara Maynard. And we're here to talk about uh, labor unions and, and uh, everything that affects labor unions. And we're going to talk about the uh, strike on May 1st, so stay tuned for that. And as a feature article, we're going to be talking about the misclassification of workers, which is affecting many, many unions across the country and the government's really getting involved because they're missing a lot of money also. So it's a really good issue to, to bring up. We want you to be up on it. I just heard about it recently, so I'm way behind late ball. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, the... Um, what are we going to talk? We're talking about the, the call, but I'm going to do the general strike here. Okay, so on the, gen, on the strike, or general, they call it general, it's not really a general because there's only two unions I know coming right now, but that's SEIU and the USWW, which is the United Service Workers of the West, right. And that's part of the big SEIU union, and they're joined by the California Federation of Teachers, CFT, and probably a lot of immigration groups also have, have announced that they're going to be going out May 1st. That's a Monday. Um, you can get this news uh, f from you where we got it from, which is a Workers Independent News Service. That's W-I-N, and that's out of Madison, Wisconsin. You can get that same news there. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about Disney, what they're doing? Uh, sure. So it's incredible news has come out of Disneyland. Um, it turns out that they have been stealing money from their workers. And it's been a situation that goes on across America. Almost every worker uh, on the line has, has been having these kind of situations where they're being forced to work off the clock. Or in this case, these are workers who were actually charged for the costumes that Disney told them that they had to wear and um, they stole overtime pay from them. So the Department of Labor has said that the Disneyland has to pay these workers back, and it's the beginning of justice for those workers. Unfortunately, it continues on in many other industries, but at least at Disneyland, Mickey's going to start doing the right thing. Good. Maybe I can start going there again. <laughs> I've been boycotting. <laughs> okay. And the other one we were going to talk about... Oh, there's another news, uh, news little flash that... Um, 
you probably heard about the new Uber drivers, which have taken the place of taxi cabs pretty much, at least in the big cities. Um, most of them are independent contractors uh, by Uber, the corporation. And uh, they're, they're, as, as the Uber gets greedier and greedier, they start cutting back on the pay, cutting back on the, the benefits, cutting back on everything. And so uh, finally the workers had it and they probably contacted a union. I think it's the Teamster Union in Seattle it was the first one to be contacted. And according to this report, uh, the Teamsters are organizing the Uber drivers in Seattle, Washington. So more about that later. Okay. Um, there's a, the other thing is, um, according to the um, um, Public Citizen uh, website, uh, the president, the new president, has cut 54 billion from job training, from medical, from the EPA, from the FDA, from education, university education grants, and from the arts education, which is PBS, all the TV, free TV, children's TV you watch. It's all going to be cut, and that 40, 54 billion is going right straight into building a military that we don't the, the size. Well, 54 billion is the size, the entire size of the Russian military. Just to give you an example of how much the the ad the ad is to the Pentagon. So we're saying that to cut all those things for 54 billion is really a bad thing. Okay. Let all me right. just let me just add to that point, Bill. Yes. You know, a budget is a moral document, and a budget really tells the story about where we're going as a country. And this budget has made it very, very clear. The president has made it clear, and uh, the, the GOP members of the Congress have made it clear who support this budget that they really don't care about people and that they really want to get out of the business of trying to give people a leg up to move them into the middle class, to help the disabled, to help the seniors, to help children who are vulnerable and not getting food at home before they go to school, and instead moves that money into the military budget. And whether or not you believe that the military should have that money, is a separate issue. The real issue is that people are going to be hungry, people are going to be starving, programs like Meals on Wheels, programs like After School uh, right. Meals are going to be cut with this budget, and it really says a lot about the leadership in this country and where they're trying to take us, and we really need to fight back. Well put, thank you for that. Okay, um, Okay. well I guess it's time to go into our classification, uh, our misclassification uh, feature article or, or feature discussion. Right. <laughs> Since we're now a TV show. Um, I just wanted to say, just, uh, just not, uh, not pertain to this, when I used to work for the phone company, they used to have a classification system of employees that was about 200 uh, classifications for three jobs. And, and uh, I just say that was just to divide the workers between like 10 cents each, 20 cents each, okay? But the people were on the job when I was working there, they'd say, well, I'm a first class switchman of da 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 da, you know? But it's, it's part of the uh, divide and conquer strategy. Okay, on misclassification, which is an epidemic in the United States right now. Um, you, you've heard about it, you've been de dealing with it quite a bit, I think, in your job when you represent some of the main unions that are fighting it. Um, I heard that the U.S. shippers um, save about 40% of costs when they go on to misclassification so of workers. Let, let's start back a little bit oh, okay. at what is misclassification oh, okay. and, how do we, and how do we get to that 40% because it's important and it's not just um, prevalent in the port trucking industry. Yes. It's prevalent really across America. Yes. Let's face it, people cost companies a lot of money. They're expensive. It costs a lot of money to pay them. They have to make payroll taxes on them in order to pay for things like workers' comp. If somebody's injured on the job, if somebody gets hurt, they might need disability. It costs a lot for health insurance. It costs a lot to pay into Social Security. If, if the workers are fortunate enough to have any kind of retirement, whether it's a 401k plan or a defined compensa a, a compensation plan, that costs a lot of money. And so bit by bit, as, as companies are trying to save a buck here and there, particularly you see this in the supply chain, where you've got companies like Walmart trying to squeeze the costs out of the system, 
they've tried to figure out ways to get rid of all of the people who do the work. Now, the ultimate of that is for everything, for trucks to be driverless. But at this point, that technology is not quite ready for prime time, and so you still have people. And so what's happening is everybody's separated. These companies are separating themselves from employees, reclassifying their work as independent contractors. And in the trucking industry, this really happened because of trucking deregulation some 30-odd years ago that this became even legal to have independent contractors as opposed to employees. But the, lo the long story short is there are very few trucking companies anymore that actually have employee drivers. Most of them are independent contractors. And what does that mean? In the case of port trucking, short haul trucking, a driver is paid by the load. They're not paid by, um, they're not paid by the hour, they're paid by the load. And then, so a driver goes to work and says, all right, I gotta drive fast, I gotta pick up as many loads as possible. They might pick up a container filled with bicycles headed to Walmart at the port of LA and drive that to a, a warehouse in the Inland Empire some you know, 30, 40 miles away. These are mostly short haul truckers. And maybe he makes two or three trips in a day and works six days in a week. He's worked you know, maybe on average 60, 70, even 80 hours. And he's keeping track of how many loads he's moving and how much he's going to make. And at the end of the week, he gets a paycheck. They call it a settlement check. And the odd thing is he thinks maybe he's going to get $2,500 or three grand for that week's worth of work. But when he gets his check, there's a bunch of deductions from that check. Turns out that the company that he drives for, and he cannot drive for more than one company. He really, truly doesn't have any freedom, as they like to say, to go to other companies and pick up other loads. He's got to drive for one company and only that company. He's and not really an independent contractor. He's not at all an independent contractor. But wait, here's the part that really is a killer, is he thinks maybe he's going to make $3,000 for the week. He hasn't been home in six days. He's going to go home on Sunday. He's feeling good about the work he's done. He thinks he's going to have $3,000 before taxes, of course, to show his family, okay, sure. this is what my hard work did. Yeah. But the odd thing is he gets a check and maybe it's for $600, $500, $400, wow. way below minimum wage. Starts looking at it and they have deducted almost all of the company's expenses from his paycheck. He is leasing the truck from a company. They're charging him to use that truck. Mostly it's a rental charge. He's, he's getting insurance through the company. They're charging him for that. They even charge the drivers to park the company truck at the company yard overnight. And they charge him for gas. Maybe he blew out a tire and he needed emergency uh, tire repair on the freeway. They've charged him for that. They've charged him wow. for DMV fees, everything. God. And at the end of the day, he has almost nothing. It is one of the biggest scams around. Wow. And so it turns out it's illegal. And it's not just happening in the trucking industry, but the trucking industry is the most sort of egregious and obvious example of this. And so the Teamsters... Um, worked together with the former US, United States Department of Labor and, and showed how labor law could be enforced in order to stop this misclassification. And what ended up uh, coming out was a landmark case called the United States Department of Labor under Hilda Solis um, versus Shippers Transport Express that led to a settlement agreement where every single driver at Shippers Transport Express was converted to employee and the company agreed to remain neutral if those drivers wanted to unionize. That is exactly what happened. Five days after they became employees, they voted to unionize. And not too long thereafter, they had negotiated their first union contract. And for the first time, they were being paid by the hour. They had health insurance. They had a pension. Um, no longer were they making, paying double taxes. If, uh, independent contractors have to pay both the employees and the employer's taxes. So suddenly the company was making the contributions in, that were necessary into the workers' comp fund, into uh, for Social Security, all of those aspects. And the drivers could get in there, work hard, do their job, and earn a fair day's pay for a hard day's work and have a check to take home to their family. So... That really is, was the landmark case that, that started to bring about change into the ports. There are now um, nearly, five, actually more than 500 drivers uh, serving the ports of LA and Long Beach who are employees and represented by the Teamsters now, Great. and many more who are trying to get there. Unfortunately, some of the largest companies down at the ports are holding out and continuing to break the law. And the drivers are not stopping. They are continuing to sue, both uh, through the California Division of Labor Standards Enforcement as well as through the U.S. courts. 
and they are winning in those cases, but again, change is slow to come. Drivers have gone on strike more 15 times over the last slightly more than two years and are not backing down. The labor unrest is going to continue. They are on a momentum. Um, and change is coming in other ways. So there are a number of benefits that we all take for granted. If you get hurt on the job, you're eligible for workers' comp. Independent contractors are not. Right. If you end up having to take time off from work because you're sick, there's disability insurance. Independent contractors do not have that. But with the Teamster support, the drivers have been pushing the envelope there, going to the various agencies that offer these benefits, and in our case, it's the California EDD, and, and applying for those benefits. The initial reaction is you're an independent contractor, you're not eligible. And the Teamsters are helping these drivers show that they are misclassified as independent contractors, and they are, in fact, eligible for these benefits. And in every single case, every single case, these drivers have won. Great. And the EDD has ruled that they Great. are, in fact, eligible. Similar sorts of things that ha have happened at the National Labor Relations Board. Uh -huh. The NLRB, the National Labor Relations Act, does not cover independent contractors. Wow. The rules in the, under the NLRA only apply to employees. Wow. So when there are unfair labor practice charges um, filed against these companies by the Teamsters on mm -hmm. behalf of the drivers for retaliation for concerted union activity, in every single case the local region of the NLRB has ruled that the workers misclassified has rights under the NLRA and a trial ensues. There's several of them going on right now as well. well one of the big things is we're organizing the ports and the, and the drivers are really exploited. And there are thousands. I mean, the Port of L.A., uh, the Port of Long Beach are the biggest ports in the country. Yes. Two-thirds of things come in for the whole country come in from the West Coast. Right. And these ports are so important. But they're exploiting the workers by basically making them, you know, basically, uh, you know, slaves to their own truck and making them own their own truck and making them what they call independent contractors. When they only, they're not independent contractors, they're employees. So the battle is they are misclassified. And when they're misclassified, they are cheated. There's basically wage theft. They're underpaid. We had one guy worked 80 hours, and it was over. His check was $4 because he owed all the money back like the company store. Wow. So we're changing that. And here in California, we've passed laws. We're bringing lawsuits to basically put these companies on notice that they can't misclassify their employees. So this has been a tremendous effort we're doing here. We're very proud of what we're doing. We've recovered millions of dollars for these workers, okay. and we also made it illegal to misclassify. So that's a start right now, but we've got the attorney general, we've got the governor, we've got everybody helping us out on this effort. So we've made a lot of progress, but there's a lot of work to do. Great, but you've done some great work. Yeah, I was also going to say they shipped all the expenses of the trucks onto the... Oh, that's right. And, and also, also a workman's comp. Yes. Uh, they're cheated on workman's comp. They're cheating on unemployment. And there's a lot of And these are all the deducts yeah. that you're supposed to have. And they shift all that to the employee. And that's... The fight rages on. And, and it's, it's a fight that is noble because it's not just for the drivers. It's for misclassified workers across America yes. who are struggling in these same situations. Yes. I heard that... I want to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. I heard that 40% of the uh, shipper profits were due to the misclassification. So that's forty percent. That's a lot. So it, you know, it's a it, an easily Googleable number. Yes, love that word. Um, at that having an employee have, moving to an independent contractor model yes. will save a company between thirty and forty percent. That's a huge amount. It's of profit. a huge amount of money. So you can see why this scheme exists. Yes. It's it's really and a why state. they're breaking the law. But but you've got to ask where 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 would that money go if they yes. were employees? Well, that's what I want to ask you. The IRS, I, I saw one of the statements by the California Department of Labor reported the IRS uh, estimates that they lost two and a, two and three quarter billion dollars in two thousand and six. Now probably by today it's more like five billion dollars they're losing. It seems to me, I, when, they, when you try to gerrymander your taxes, they come right after you. But five million billion dollars they're losing, the IRS ought to be getting after these companies. So, so tax law enforcement is just as weak as labor law enforcement, unfortunately. And those of us who follow the law, or the laws are the ones left holding the bag. It, it's, it, the enforcement's against the little, little guys. That's what's sorry. There's no enforcement against the corporations that are making all this profit. It's against the little guy that 
makes a ten dollar mistake in his in his application. And 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 it, and it ends up robbing, uh, you know, people like my daughter who's in school, uh -huh. you know, of, yes. of right. cherished dollars for her school. And you know, going back to an issue we were talking about earlier about the fifty four billion dollar appropriation shift, let's call it in the in the Trump budget. Um, you know, maybe none of that would be necessary if this independent contractor model really uh, was stopped um, yes. in its tracks because there would be a tremendous amount of new tax revenue brought in that right. could help keep programs going and perhaps even keep their own agenda going. So it's, it's, yeah. it's criminal. Now, I, I also read in this report by the uh, Department of Labor that the states, all the 50 states, lost uh, about $200 million every year from unemployment insurance. That's right. Now, in other words, if you're sick or, you, or, you ha or you're laid off, there's, a, there's an insurance policy for workers. You don't even have to be in a union, actually. But the unions fought for that and got that. But not for uh, independent contractors. So that the, uh, when they lay people off, it's just free for the corporations to lay people off as they will. Whereas other, co where other companies, like the phone company, they have to think, how much am I going to lose in unemployment insurance before they make a, some kind of a radical action against the workers? So down, so down at the ports, um, one of the things that the Teamsters have been doing in order to deal with this issue uh -huh. is uh, filing for unemployment for drivers when either there's a slowdown, there, uh, you know, there mm -hmm. was a, a well-publicized slowdown with the ILWU and the PMA, right. and during that time, um, drivers were not able to move cargo. Additionally, when Hanjin went bankrupt, the big right. shipping line went bankrupt, right. That entire terminal was shut down and that directly impacted drivers. And so we helped uh, these drivers file for unemployment insurance. Mm -hmm. And again, in every single case, we were able to secure those benefits. Wow. So what happens in those cases is that then the uh, EDD goes back to those companies and makes them pay up Good. for the unemployment uh, taxes that they have not paid into the system. So um, justice is coming. Unfortunately, it's coming one by one and should be coming a lot faster uh, these, this industry should be forced to change. And, and when you said it wasn't just the port drivers, I read that in the uh, report by Department of Labor, to, in 2012 there was something like a million uh, workers misclassified in just New York State. So California probably has a million and a half, two million workers. It's a huge problem. It's, it's a huge problem. And, and you know, the issue, as, again, as, as small business owners have to deal with this all the time, we are told that if we control the work, the hours, and the working conditions of somebody who works for a company, then they are not an independent contractor. Yet, these large corporations are getting away with it and stealing money. Not only, it's, it's wage theft, and they're stealing money not only from their own employees that they misclassify as independent contractors, but from the public at large by not paying the taxes. And it, it happens, you, yeah. you, you see it, it's Uber, it's Lyft, yes. it's, it's in trucking, it's FedEx has been found guilty of it. Um, it's, That's right. It was United Parcel before FedEx. Yeah, right. And uh, but UPS is union, so they're largely they moving. Are. You know, and uh, exactly. Um, and it's it's really a criminal situation. It really is. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Um, talk a little bit about the. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you 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 told me about some uh, uh, uh some, I guess it was a Teamster driver. He's not a Teamster. Oh, driver. a port driver. Yeah, but port it was a port driver. driver. Right. Can you, can you tell so that story ab absolutely. So there's a there's a driver. I just heard about this story this morning. It's, it's just an incredible story. So quick backstory on his company. It's called XPO Logistics, which is one of the largest logistics companies in the world, and uh, they have operations here in the United States uh, and in Europe. And it's a company that has come together in a way been a, 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 a sort of a Pac-Man new company, <laughs> where uh, using the pension funds of Canadian teachers. Uh, this company has gone out and purchased a large number of port trucking companies, of last mile companies, like the, the guys, if you order a refrigerator from Lowe's, who is going to bring that refrigerator to your house? It's not Lowe's, it's XPO Logistics. So they right. call those last mile drivers. Freight drivers, XPO Logistics bought Conway, a very large national freight company. Right. And then they went on a buying spree in Europe and owned quite a few companies in England, in Spain, in France, um, and of several other com uh, countries throughout Europe. Well, to say, to put it simply, um, this integration of all of these these companies is not going well at all. And in Europe, the workers are unionized very and very strong in their unions. In yes. the U.S., this has been a much slower process. So there is an active campaign by the Teamsters in the freight division 
to uh, to try to help the new XPO employees on the freight side, and there they are, bona fide employees, become Teamsters, and there's a number of facilities that have, in fact, already held elections um, and are Teamsters, and, and there's an effort to negotiate a first contract. At the port, though, it's a whole different story, um, and also in their last mile division. These workers are all misclassified as independent contractors and have been fighting back. They've gone on strike a number of times. Um, and they have filed lawsuits and claims and whatnot. Well, there's one particular driver, uh, incredible guy, who's worked for either XPO or the legacy company that XPO purchased for some time, had a cancerous tumor on his kidney. So last fall, now he has no health insurance. He's an independent contractor. Don't even believe that XPO provides much health insurance to their employees, but nevertheless, he has nothing as an independent contractor. Um, so... But nevertheless, he, he and he's a family man, and he needed to have surgery for this cancerous tumor on his kidney, which he had last fall. I believe it was in November of 2016. Wow. So, um, That's a killer. Uh, it's, it's a killer. Thankfully, he ha has continued to survive and appears to be recovering from Great. this. But nevertheless, he hasn't been able to work. In fact, he hasn't worked since August when he first got sick. So the Teamsters, even though he's not a Teamster member, he's an independent contractor, and independent contractors are not allowed to join a union. Um, they consider it to be uh, collusion, which is crazy, but, but a fact um, that they perceive. So he came to the Teamsters and said, I need help. I have been fighting to become an employee. I've been fighting for my rights, but now I'm in crisis as a family and I need help. How do I get disability benefits? So he applied for those disability benefits. And of course, the California EDD rejected them and said, you're an independent contractor. And so with the Teamsters help, he was able to prove that he was misclassified. And he just received a lump sum check for thirteen thousand dollars for the right. disability benefits that he should have been getting, and he's eligible for as much as fifty thousand dollars, depending upon how long he ends up being off work. Of course, he can't work. But the craziest thing of all is that he's got forty-five thousand dollars in medical bills that he needs to deal with, and he really needs to get back to work as quickly as possible in order to pay those off. Right. He should not be in this situation. No American worker should be in this situation where they're having to beg for the benefits that are rightly theirs, where they're having to beg for health care yes. um, that should otherwise be a right in this country. But we've at least had a small victory for this worker, another notch in the belt of the workers, to try to continue to prove that they are in fact misclassified and must be reclassified as employees. But XPO Logistics is one of the worst of the bunch. Wow, that's a great story. Whew. All right, let's take a break for a second, Tom. <clears throat> My name is Tom Morello, and I'm a union man. The first song I'm going to play for you today is a fighting song. The first song I'm going to play with you today, people, is a union song. For the fight all the workers who are twisted, tricked, and robbed, for the peasant in Guatemala, in a sweatshop, got your job. And she can't feed her family all the pennies that she makes. Meanwhile, the crime rates rising up and down the Great Lakes states. Like vegetables left in the field, the signatures smell rotten. On the contracts and the deeds that push the race down to the bottom. So they load the rubber bullets, so they fire another round. I'm heading to the tear gas. Dig in, man, hold your ground for Joe Hill and Cesar Chavez, who fought in their own time for our brothers and our sisters up and down that picket line. For the unnamed and unnumbered who struggle brave and long. For the union men and women standing up and standing strong. 